Hi, I'm Mark Warfall. I milk 2,000 Holstein cows here in Yilma in northern, north central Victoria with my wife Kate. We have recently developed a green film site as a freestall dairy operation. Sesta Breed history since 2013. Kate and I have owned and managed the family farm I grew up on, just 12 kilometres away from this site. The home farm, as we call it, is a grazing operation with a dry lot used to house the cows and feed over the summer months. Having gradually increased the herd from 500 cows to 1,200 cows, there was no opportunity for further expansion on the home farm. So we began to consider developing a large farm with a containment housing operation on a greenfield site nearby. We were interested in developing a large dairy dry lot of four to 5,000 cows. As the home dry lot worked well over the summer months and would be considerably less cost to build than a freestall facility. However, after struggling through a long wet winter which hit the region in 2017 and looking at many dry lots and freestalls in the US, we decided to invest in a freestall that would enable us to better cope with wet winter, minimise heat stress, optimise feed conversion efficiency and it'll be a lot easier to attract staff. In late 2017 we found this greenfield site with channel and groundwater sources and in March 2018 completed the purchase of this with the aim of developing a new operation on the site within five years. In 2019 we travelled again to the US to meet with a consultant engineer and over the next six months we worked up a design and costings with him for two 1,000 cow freestalls with an effluent system. Dairy parlour and holding yard as the first stage of the development and two more 1,000 cow freestalls as the second stage. COVID threw a spanner in the works, but in 2021, we commenced construction and the mission stage one in early 2023 at a total cost of $10,000 per cow. The two freestall facilities are identical. Each one is 230 metres long and 41 metres wide, including a 1.8 metre eave on each side on a 1% slope and orientated east-west to maximise shade during summer. Each structure is wide span with an open web truss portal frame and a corrugated iron roof with an 18% pitch. Unlike most pre-stalls which have a centre feed table, we opted for a feeding table along both sides of the building with six double rows of stalls between them. This cost extra as the shed had to be widened from 32 to 41 metres. But with this configuration, beds are much less likely to get wet when it rains and we only need three rows of fans installed instead of four. We intended to use dry manure as bedding in the stalls. However, halfway through construction of the two free stalls, we heard of other farmers experienced mastitis problems. So we changed our plan to add a sand recovery system so we could bed the stalls with sand. Fortunately, our design engineer had proposed the effluent pit so that the sand lane could be readily be placed in front of it. The dairy parlour is an 80 unit rotary platform which cows enter from a roofed holding yard on the west side. We use milk meters to measure each cow's milk yield and conductivity. We use collars to monitor cow activity and rumination. Large, energy efficient, variable speed magnetic driven fans on the south side and north side pull air into the parlour through misters which operate in hot weather to provide evaporative cooling. All large fans hanging above the platform deliver this cooled air onto the cows as they are milked and the air is released over the holding yard. The dairy holding yard, which is 72 metres long and 13 metres wide, is fitted with 
Hobble sprinklers and 34 fans automatically control to keep the cows cool and control flies. For added cow comfort, rubber flooring is installed in the high traffic areas near the platform and down the exit race. We milk cows in groups of 500 and our aim is that cows spend no more than 60 minutes in the yard each milking. Since early 2023, we've progressively brought 2,000 cows here from the home farm to fill the free stall. This free stall accommodates the early lactation cow groups and first calving group, and the, that one accommodates two mid-lactation groups. To keep things simple, we only have milking cows here. They arrive at day four, post calving from the home farm and remain until dry off unless they get mastitis or become sick. At this stage, all our far off cows, close up cows, mastitis cows, sick cows are cared for at the home farm by skilled staff as are all young stock. As farmers, we want to make our cows healthy, happy while getting as much milk as possible the two things go hand in hand. We have been pleased to see that cows have arrived from the home farm. Their milk production has increased by four litres per day. Despite the low nutritional quality of last season's fodder crops, and at any time of the day, we find few cows standing in the stall alleys with most lying down in the stalls. That's another indicator that the cows are comfortable. We've had to make a couple of changes to the stalls. Cows were laying too far forward, so we adjusted the positioning of the end rail of each stall back by 100 millimetres. The sand we first used in the stalls was quite gritty and caused some hoof issues. So we had to replace it with finer sand from another source. All cows are currently being milked three times a day with cups on just before 3 a.m., 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. So eight hours apart each group. And after each group leave the free stall to be milked, the feed and the alley are flood washed to get scraped once a day and loads of feed are mixed and delivered along each drive alley once once in the morning between 3 a.m. and 10 a.m. and pushed up four to five times per day. Water troughs are tipped every time cows leave the free stall to be milked and scrubbed once per day. Stalls are topped up with sand twice per week. We find the free stall system much easier to manage than the grazing system. With grazing, things are moving all the time Whereas with this system, day-to-day -day management doesn't change. Of course, a contained housing system like this must be underpinned by high fodder production with high water use efficiency. With our double cropping system, we are aiming to harvest at least 25 to 26 tonne of dry matter of corn and winter cereal crops each year. That's about three times as much dry matter as we would obtain in a grazing system. With only marginally more water, tonnes of feed per megalitre of water is what we aim to optimise. We are aiming to build up a fodder reserve of two years silage as part of our risk management. Carrying the development through planning, construction and commissioning and into operation has been a big effort. We are now taking some time to consider making minor adjustments, installing rooftop solar and further refining our operating procedures and data management before we progress to stage two. With the third and fourth 1,000 cow free stall in operation, our milk production and income will be doubled and the development payback period will be reduced. So we are really excited to start stage two as soon as possible.